The Texas Chainsaw Massacre releases on August 18th for the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. It's being made by Sumo Nottingham, and it's being published by Gun Interactive. You may recognize that from Friday the 13th. The game releases on Game Pass, but will cost $40 if you want to buy it anywhere else, including on Xbox. It'll be releasing both physically as well as digitally, so we'll have a physical copy. The game is a 3v4 asymmetrical horror game based off of the 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The two playable groups in the game are called Victim and killers three killers per match four victims per match there's five victims in the game at launch each character is their own unique person and they'll have their own abilities that's tied specifically to them the five survivors are connie who has the ability to pick locks faster sunny who's able to hear noises made by anybody nearby julie who's able to not be tracked by the family for a limited time while also having reduced stamina loss leland who's able to shoulder hit the family and stun them and anna who's able to take reduced damage for a limited time these abilities are not transferred so they're specifically on each person, and that'll make each of them a little bit different. Meanwhile, we have five family members that launch, the classics in Leatherface, the cook and the hitchhiker, and two newcomers in Sissy and Johnny. Each of these characters play very differently and have their own strengths and weaknesses. Leatherface is as powerful as you think he'd be, but he's not the best at moving around in the maps. The cook is extremely slow and has very low stamina, but is able to listen out for noise from the victims and mark them when he can hear them. The hitchhiker is very mobile and is able to move much like the victims can, but he can also lay traps around the map to trap each individual person. Sissy uses poison to injure the victims, but can also contaminate items around the map. And Johnny has the ability to track victims by seeing their footprints. At launch, the game will come with three maps, the family house, the slaughterhouse, and the gas station map. Two of these were already playable during the tech test along with three family members and four victims in terms of how you play the game it's as follows from the victim's perspective the match begins with the survivors tied up in the basement of each map they'll need to immediately break out of that and find a way to escape for the beginning portion of each match they'll be locked in a basement with leatherface who's also locked in there with them you'll scavenge nearby toolboxes for health lockpicks, and more to eventually unlock the doors in the basement to break out. By doing so, you'll awaken Grandpa, who's an NPC who on occasion will scream. When he screams, the victims will be shown. So as a victim, you'll want to stay completely still when he does that. You can also incapacitate Grandpa for a limited time. The game stresses heavily on stealth and playing your role. Sound is important. You make a lot of noise. Whether you're hitting things in the environment, whether you're running, whether you're searching through toolboxes too quickly, if you do it too fast, you'll make a lot of noise. You'll alert the family members to where you are. Lights can be turned on and off throughout the map, and you'll want to stick to the shadows and pick which times you're going to run and which times you'll want to crouch and hide. You can leap, crawl, slither through certain parts of the map, but the family, certain ones of them, are also capable of doing the same thing, or they can also close those paths entirely. Although you'll be able to customize your character through abilities and attribute points, they're generally good at some things and weak at others. You can make up for that. We'll talk about that later. It's best, though, to play your role. Each map will have a handful of ways to escape. They'll have main gate exits, which normally require you to turn the electricity off or the generator off. They'll have a water valve escape. They'll have a fuse box escape. All lead to the same ending, escaping the map. On the flip side of things, we have the family members, which again, have their own strengths and weaknesses. Their goal is to stop the victims from escaping, as well as feeding Grandpa, who again will help in locating the victims. He'll have levels, and you'll want to get him as high up as you can, as he'll scream more often, and you'll be able to find the victims more often. You'll do this by dropping blood in his mouth, which can be acquired through blood buckets throughout the map. Each family member can hold a certain amount. Some can hold more than others, but you also get blood by injuring, so just hitting a victim, or
or killing the victims. You'll then bring it back to Grandpa and activate it. One thing I haven't discussed yet, though, is communication and the difficulty. From playing the tech test, I can tell you this game is honestly legit. It nails the atmosphere, and it's extremely hard. You need to be communicating with your teammates through your microphone, whether you're the family or the victims. The game will have crossplay, but it's not perfect crossplay. PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC can all play with each other, but Xbox One can only play with other Xbox One. Same goes for PS4. PS4 players with other PS4 players. The game will also be multiplayer only. There's no single player modes. There's no bots or anything like that. Since it is a multiplayer only game, it will have a leveling system. There's a lot going on there. And there's too much to talk about in this video. I did do an entire separate video on it. I'll link it at the end of this video. But to keep it short, you'll be leveling two things up throughout the game. You, as in the username or the player, and then the characters you're playing as themselves. Each character can be leveled up to level 10, and the game will show both levels, both yours and the characters, to everybody else before each match starts. So you'll know the power level, right? How high up each person is and what you're dealing with. Future support of the game has been kept pretty quiet, but there seems to be a clear want to do more, whether it's cosmetics, which seems to be the focus, or if it's future maps, killers, and victims. It all kind of depends on the game's success at launch. Either way, the game won't have lawsuits to deal with in the way that Friday the 13th did, which stopped pretty much all future support for that game. The launch times have also been revealed with the game going live the day of on August 18th, although the times will vary depending depending on your region, but it will not unlock the night before. No midnight launch, no 10 p.m. launch the night before. It'll be that day. I've covered this game quite a bit since it was actually just a rumor, and I plan to do a lot more videos on it when the game releases, so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Turn on the bell so you know when all these videos go up. Leave in the comments if you're getting the game, if you're interested in it. You can always friend me as well. Podcast now on Xbox, podcast now on PlayStation. We can play the game together. Thank Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.